Thanks, Nick, and thank you, KEI, especially, uh, for commissioning my paper, inviting me to speak in front of all of you, and I thank all of you for um, showing interest in this very important topic. I'm going to begin by setting the stage before I jump into the meat of my paper with some policy recommendations. I'm going to begin by um, giving some contextual background on why Seoul would want to um, be the next chair for the Nuclear Security Summit. Uh, and I'm going to provide my reading of it because I'm not going to try and pretend I'm the Korean spokesperson. Uh, and then I'm going to highlight some key characteristics uh, Korea has that it can capitalize on uh, to lead some key areas in nuclear materials security, which uh, could actually eventually become the challenges uh, Seoul faces. So why Korea? Well, we've seen Korea quickly transform uh, from being a, a recipient of uh, international aid to becoming a donor. Now, I'm not going to go through the history, but let's fast forward to the present day, to the Lee Myung-bak administration. And we're seeing him implementing and pursuing uh, what they're calling a global Korea policy. And this is this apparently is pretty high on their priority list. And it's a catchphrase uh, that symbolizes President Lee's vision to become a more assertive uh, contributor in the global arena. And we can see many such references to this so-called global Korea policy in many official documents, uh, most notably in the past two defense white papers in 2008 and 2010, uh, where it highlights uh, global Korea as a national security objective of enhancing competence and status internationally. Now, you can read more in my paper about why President Obama might want to ask or would have wanted to ask Seoul to uh, be the next chair for the summit, but uh, for South Korea, it may have taken into consideration, uh, into consideration a few points uh, before it accepted the chairmanship. First, uh, its global policy, as I just uh, mentioned. Second, uh, perhaps a symbolic and pivotal time in geopolitical history next year uh, as we see uh, presidential elections and leadership transitions in, the, in South Korea, in the US, uh, in China, and in Russia. And also, next year will be a very interesting year for all of us uh, to witness as North Korea claims that it will open the door to becoming a mighty and prosperous nation next year. Uh, now, the third consideration may have been that the summit could be a way to, uh, to uh, highlight to the world the stark contrast between it, between the Republic of Korea, um, that is uh, a responsible user of nuclear energy and um, a growing nuclear nuclear exporter and contrast it with North Korea, the rogue aspirant uh, for nuclear <clears throat> weapons, while implicitly using uh, the summit to send off an implicit message to North Korea uh, to denuclearize and join the peaceful uh, nuclear club. Now, finally, the last consideration could have been that um, the summit could be used perhaps as a venue uh, to advertise South Korea's accident-free uh, record in nuclear reactors and perhaps shop for potential buyers of uh, nuclear reactors, especially having won um, a very big deal with the UAE in 2009. Now, the Washington summit was clearly a U.S. agenda uh, focused exclusively on uh, nuclear security, uh, but with Fukushima in March this year, uh, it adds a new dimension, uh, and Korea is uniquely positioned to lead a, a a nuclear security summit with a more global focus. Uh, Korea is a non-nuclear weapon state, as we know, uh, and has um, been recognized as a responsible uh, player and responsible uh, member of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and a host of other international uh, regimes and institutions. It operates uh, 21 nuclear reactors with five more on the way, um, and which uh, produce about 40% of the country's electricity, and Korea is becoming a competitive nuclear exporter. Now, it's also a nuclear, a non-nuclear weapon state with a nuclear-armed um, North Korea in its backyard. Uh, so in this sense, Seoul can also play uh, the vital bridging role between the nuclear states and the nuclear uh, not, uh, the non-nuclear weapon states, as well as a bridging mechanism between uh, the developed and the developing countries. Now, against this backdrop, I believe there are clear ways, um, as my title suggests, uh, to add a Korean twist uh, to the upcoming summit agenda while leading a more intensified uh, effort to prevent uh, nuclear terrorism. Uh, but all of these that I just mentioned are both opportunities and contributions, as well as the challenges that South Korea uh, 
could face in the months to come. Now, next year's summit comes at a very crudo, uh, critical and crucial juncture uh, in the world as we continue to experience a growing number of um, uh, terrorist attacks. And uh, as we have seen, evidently, uh, Al-Qaeda and the Mumbai attacks in 2008, and even this year's Norwegian uh, apparently attack on nuclear facilities uh, was an option that they had considered. Now, the, the summit also comes at a time when, uh, when Fukushima has, um, sent, has sent alarm bells and even a wake-up call around the world. And it's reminded us of yet another adversary, not just terrorists, but um, the force of nature that combined with uh, the force of malice, uh, we could, uh, they can actually wreak havoc um, and, and actually threaten uh, the very foundations um, of, of nuclear facilities that were intended to protect and not harm people. So the Seoul Summit comes at a pivotal time when we're also entering uh, a world where nuclear materials will spread and continue to be produced as countries uh, opt for nuclear energy uh, to meet their energy needs. So I would imagine Seoul would want to try to prevent the Seoul Summit from being a replica of the Washington summit. Uh, I would imagine uh, that Seoul would want to, and it appears that it's taken an approach um, of wanting to be remembered in history as the implementation event and not uh, the conceptualization event as we've seen last year. So what can Korea do? Well, there are four areas um, that I believe Korea could highlight and focus on to really put uh, the Korean stamp or the Korean flair to the agenda. The first is nuclear safety and security. Uh, and radioactive materials. The second is uh, nuclear instruments and legal frameworks. The third is North Korea. And the fourth is the IAEA and a strategy for follow-on uh, summits. Now, on nuclear safety security interface, um, let me just backtrack a little bit. As I was thinking about the initial thoughts uh, for this paper um, way back when, I, I came up with numbers two, three, and four, but then Fukushima hit. And the paper, and I came up with the title Korean Twist, but the paper itself took on a twist of its own in light of Fukushima. And a week after Fukushima hit, um, I proposed in an op-ed that safety must be included in the security discussion. And, and the reason for this is that uh, Fukushima has given uh, malefactors a major tip. Uh, that a Fukushima-like terrorist attack um, could is actually quite plausible. Now, the Washington summit was, in effect, an important uh, initiative stemming from President Obama's uh, Prague speech in April, and it rightfully focused exclusively on nuclear materials security. Uh, and it was also, uh, you, can, you can see it as a reaction uh, to 9-11. Now, in line of Fukushima, I would argue that the next nuclear security summit uh, is a reaction, an inevitable reaction to Fukushima in part, which is why we need to incorporate um, safety issues in the security discussion, but focus it very uh, narrowly on the interface, the overlapping parts between safety and security. And we call it, we have a lot of um, phrases these days, the nuclear security safety interface, the nexus, and what have you. And so this very narrow focus would actually help us prevent duplicating existing uh, fora and existing venues where, we, where safety measures and safety considerations um, are well underway. Now, the fundamental difference uh, between safety, nuclear safety, and security lies in the human factor. Case in point, Fukushima is a safety concern and a, a terrorist, a Fukushima-like terrorist attack would be a security concern. And in the same vein, uh, the safety of radioactive sources means reducing the likelihood of accidents that could harm people. Uh, and the security of radioactive sources refers to uh, measures to prevent these uh, materials from going astray or being diverted for illegal and malevolent acts. So those are the differences, but where do they share some commonalities? Well, the fundamental objective, they share the fundamental objective uh, to protect life, and there are overlapping areas that can be strengthened. So a more specific example is, what does a terrorist, a Fukushima-like terrorist um, act look like? Well, 
uh, the same conditions of Fukushima that was hit by a tsunami earthquake can actually be recreated um, by a person or persons, whether they are from the inside or from the outside. Uh, for example, damage to the reactor's cooling system, inability to supply outside power to um, the reactor, or, in a, uh, or, or damage to the on-site energy so uh, power source. So all of these conditions uh, could eventually lead to a major meltdown and uh, massive emissions of radiation. Now, world leaders at the Security Summit could begin by working uh, nationally, bilaterally, and multilaterally uh, to implement stronger safety and security measures at nuclear power plants and facilities, uh, pursuant to and building upon the recommendations uh, by the IAEA nuclear security series documents. Uh, and world leaders could support a measure that measures that strengthen uh, nuclear facilities against sabotage, attack, and insider threats. And I'll talk about the IAEA a little bit more later. World leaders could also uh, place a greater emphasis on implementing measures to ensure uh, that safety and security of st uh, spent stored nuclear fuel. Uh, particularly, there are con controversial proposals when it comes to um, armed guards at nuclear f um, sites, and and it, it would need to take some persuasion uh, to persuade states with differing uh, threat perceptions um, on the value of such measures, and then deciding on whether some specific baselines are needed, especially, for example, uh, in the type of um, arms that, the types of weapons or the types of arms that the guards um, would be holding at these sites. Now, the same logic applies to calls for a baseline security standard, which many of my colleagues in this community have um, been advocating for. And the challenge is how to overcome uh, political barriers and sovereignty issues and different uh, differing threat perceptions again. Now the difference between safety and security again is in terms of safety there's a lot, transparency is not a big issue but when it comes to security we're dealing with um, even military facilities and what have you so so sovereignty and confidentiality are, are definite challenges that we need to overcome. So it can be argued that nuclear safety and security are two sides of the same coin that cannot be separated at the upcoming summit. Uh, Fukushima, as well as the trend for states to opt for nuclear energy, uh, have demonstrated that the paradigm of peaceful nuclear management and storage and use and control is, in fact, changing. Now, the same logic applies to radioactive materials, safety and security of radioactive materials, and because of the because of concerns of the um, threats of the dirty bomb and the need for hospitals, even civilian hospitals, uh, to secure them as well, uh, since hundreds of medical and industrial radioactive sources are said to be abandoned, stolen, um, lost each year. And this, again, constitutes both a safety and a security concern. Uh, now, Korea is known apparently by the IAE and other um, neighboring countries uh, for its uh, technology to trace and track radioactive sources. And there's a chart in, in the paper you can refer to that explains a bit more on that. So this type of technology could perhaps, and know-how, could perhaps be shared, um, maybe even exported to other countries. The second topic is, now I'm going to be a bit bold and say the, t the word nuclear nonproliferation uh, via nuclear instruments and legal frameworks. Now I and I say I'm going to be bold in saying the word nu uh, nonproliferation because most uh, security experts and advocates of the first security summit um, do not like to talk about no nonproliferation in the context of nuclear security because we have existing uh, fora uh, for this type of discussion. Um, uh, the, the, the biggest example would be the NPT review conference. Um, but because Seoul faces the threat of a major nuclear proliferator, which is North Korea in its backyard, um, in, in that frame of mind, I would suggest that Seoul could actually narrowly focus the nonproliferation discussion in the context of nuclear instruments and legal frameworks that exist. Uh, and this focused and narrow uh, discussion could prevent a replica um, of an, an existing MPT type of discussion. And it would also prevent legitimizing, for example, North Korea's nuclear programs, because the, the fundamentals of nuclear security is we're trying to prevent these materials from going astray and falling into the wrong hands. But if you bring North Korea into this discussion, uh, you could send off the wrong message of implicitly acknowledging uh, and legitimizing the existence of their nuclear programs. 
since nuclear material security is not just a national or bilateral problem, but rather a global one, uh, Seoul should persuade uh, world leaders to uh, promote, adhere to, and implement relevant international legal frameworks. Now, I've outlined um, some of the major um, frameworks in my paper, but uh, there are three of particular necessity. Now, the first is a Convention on the Physical Protection of Nuclear uh, Materials, or, C or CPPNM, and its 2005 amendment. Now, the, di the, the difference between CPPNM and its 2005 amendment is the international versus the domestic com component. The second framework is the International Convention on the Suppression of uh, Acts of Nuclear Terrorism, or ICSANT, as we like to call it. And so the final is UN Security Council Resolution 1540. Now, the key is not to create uh, more instruments and more legal frameworks, but the key is to actually use existing ones to strengthen them, to deepen them, and perhaps even ask the IAEA, for example, uh, to help coordinate uh, the relevant national and regional and multilateral bodies. Now, the third topic is North Korea. What to do about North Korea? Well, I don't believe it's realistic to expect that a discussion on North Korea will ever take center stage at the official summits or even take up a chunk or a, a substantial chunk of the discussion excuse me, discussion, uh, because of the, fundam the fundamental objective of nuclear security, as I mentioned earlier. However, it would still uh, be a grave political loss uh, for Seoul if Korean leaders neglect to mention this um, at the security summit uh, because North Korea is Seoul's biggest security threat, um, particularly in the face of the general public that usually associates the terms nuclear threats with North Korea. Uh, now, because the summit aims to secure fissile materials in respective countries, the challenge would be to deal with it, to deal with North Korea in a manner that, again, does not legitimize uh, Pyongyang's nuclear programs. Now, the other challenge uh, would be to, to provide further impetus to existing frameworks like the six-party talks uh, while trying to draw a line between the nuclear security summit process and the NPT process. Now, we've heard President Lee Myung-bak repeatedly um, extends the open invitation that North Korea, North Korean leader Kim Jong-il is invited to the security summit if it does X, Y, and Z. Well, it's unclear whether North Korea will meet the right conditions uh, to gain that um, access to the security summit, but if all goes well, um, some possible conditions to grant eligibility uh, for North Korea's participation, perhaps um, as an observer at the nuclear security summit, could be for Pyongyang uh, to return to the spirit and the status of the September 2005 joint statement, and for all six countries to resume the six-party process before um, March 2012, which is the Nuclear Security Summit. Now, attending the summit, uh, there are questions involved whether North Korea would actually even want to attend the Nuclear Security Summit, and I would have to argue that it would actually be a win-win situation for North Korea as well, because especially in light of Fukushima, Fukushima, which rocked the reactors of a country that's known for its state-of-the-art technology, uh, would have sent a clear safety alert to the North Korean regime. Now the summit, so what could we do in, in, in real terms at the summit in terms of North Korea? Well, the summit could call on rogue regimes and nuclear aspirants to surrender their nuclear weapons ambitions and join the community of nuclear non-proliferation and peaceful nuclear um, energy users. Now, perhaps the most ambitious uh, goal at the summit uh, would be to include a very vaguely worded clause in the Seoul communique, um, but to use language, a very vague language, but with clear implications. Now, I say vague because uh, these documents are signed and adopted based on consensus and unanimous consensus. And it would be very difficult politically to explicitly name North Korea in, in a document. Um, so a suggestion that I, some language that I could come up with is perhaps in this whole community, uh, communique calling on all states regimes and non-state actors with aspirations to acquire or develop nuclear weapons or nuclear parts as well as those in violation of the NPT to surrender their weapons ambitions, roll back existing nuclear programs, and enjoy greater benefits as responsible international players and users of peaceful nuclear energy while cooperating 
multilaterally to secure all vulnerable nuclear and radioactive materials. Now, the communique could also call on nuclear armed states and aspirants currently in violation of the NBT to refrain from transferring nuclear materials, parts, technology, and know-how. So again, the vague wording, but those who know can read behind uh, read between the lines and see that this, the statement clearly indicates North Korea and other state actors and other violators of the NBT. Um, some people have suggested perhaps adopting a chairman statement, which is separate from the official Seoul communique. And, and my argument to that is, yes, a chairman statement would be useful if it can also receive unanimous consensus. And that's what, in effect, a chairman statement is. Uh, and without, and if you only have those like-minded states sign on to it without full unanimous consensus, uh, consensus uh, then I would have to argue that that would lack impact and effectiveness. At the very least, yes, we should um, have some side meetings, bilateral meetings, multilateral meetings among like-minded states and especially among the six party, the, the members of the six party talks. And also at the very least, um, yes, we should have President Im Myung Bak and other senior Korean officials in, in statements and in speeches and in discussions and official dialogue uh, to mention North Korea and the need uh, to resolve the North Korean nuclear issue. And I think we can expect uh, this to happen. Now, finally, the IAEA and subsequent summits. Uh, the nuclear security summits, I believe, should strengthen uh, the IAEA as an observer, um, uh, sorry, as an overseer, an advisor, and um, a provider of guidelines and assistance, which its mandate is set up to do. Um, now, the difference between the NSS process and the IAEA would be the IAEA, yes, as this advisor and the, and the guider, and the summits could be used um, to inject the political force needed to implement uh, these existing, uh, stand existing and new nuclear security standards, guidelines, and measures um, in, in both nuclear security and safety. Now, they can also, the, the summits can also help breed and integrate security cultures uh, into their national um, cultures and governance. Now, it's important uh, that the security summit does not, and other ad, ad hoc groups do not replace the IAEA in any shape or form. Now, a third summit is definitely needed to serve as uh, a useful function to complete President Obama's four-year uh, objective and cement uh, the initiatives agreed upon by world leaders. So it'd be helpful to, for, for South Korea to, uh, as soon as possible, to strategize a midterm, the second summit, a, a, a short term, the second summit, and a midterm, the third summit strategy as it continues to put together the agenda and it continues uh, to craft the communique. Now, a Seoul summit with a slightly expanded scope, which includes the safety, the interface of nuclear safety and security, as well as radioactive materials, uh, could serve as the turning point in eventually broadening the agenda a little bit further in the future um, as appropriate uh, to meet evolving global challenges um, in the world. And this is why the third chair of the Nuclear Security Summit should be approached um, as soon as possible uh, this year, if, if possible, um, so that the strategy can still, um, so that Seoul can actually come up with the strategy as it finalizes um, the various, uh, the Seoul communique and the agenda. Now, what happens after the third summit, supposedly in 2014? Well, I would still argue that we should still have nuclear security summits, whether it's every two years or whatnot, uh, to maintain the urgency of nuclear security at the highest level of government and to ensure their implementation. Now, nuclear security is imperative uh, that will remain with us so long as uh, the threat of terrorism uh, through nuclear and radioactive means exist. Now, once security measures are normalized, quote unquote, or, or are universalized, um, I, I would suggest that it would be okay to bring it back down uh, to the working level or, or senior level um, of government. So in conclusion, Seoul very much is tasked with a very difficult and challenging responsibility to not only chair uh, a major international summit, but uh, to also show substantive and effective leadership by, by furthering uh, the nuclear security goal set out last year while also leaving behind its legacy. Now, the slightly broader agenda for Nexter Summit also pressures Seoul uh, that uh, 
to prove uh, that an expanded communique can, in fact, provide effective means uh, to combat nuclear and radiological terrorism. Now, diplomacy will be key. Diplomacy will serve to be an increasingly integral tool in garnering consensus, uh, consensus and implementation of these non-binding non uh, guidelines to safely secure vulnerable nuclear materials and to securely safeguard, so see both terms, securely safeguard uh, nuclear materials uh, and facilities around the world. Now, political force is needed to be injected um, into these nuclear security measures from the summit level to help alleviate some of the domestic uh, budgetary and bureaucratic hurdles. While the March 2012 summit uh, may be a chance for President Yi to uh, raise Korea's international profile as, the glo as his glo uh, global Korea policy aims to do. The summit would actually in part be a barometer of success for many of these new, uh, these added initiatives or the Korean twist initiatives. Um, and especially when it comes to nuclear safety and security. The ROK is a symbolic country that faces two dilemmas. Um, it's it carries a responsibility of uh, nuclear security be uh, with because of the linkage with North Korea nuclear terrorism, but it also carries a responsibility of nuclear safety because of the implications Fukushima has on Korea and in surrounding waters um, that it shares with uh, China and Japan. But not only is the security summit a challenge, but it's also an opportunity for Seoul uh, to show effective leadership uh, in deepening global nuclear security measures, particularly uh, in a busy political year next year when we will see most issues dominated by domestic issues as soon as the, su the summit is over. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I look forward to our discussion.